for a gun fight. That is much better. Now, first things first. Please, during or after our presentation here, do not try to handle our weapons. They are real and they are dangerous. Now, with all the safety talk out of the way, does anyone here have a cell phone with them? Raise your hand. Throw it up in the air for me. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you need to do to keep that phone from making noise during our show would, would be greatly appreciated. Does anyone here have a small child with them? Raise your hand. Throw them up in the air for me. <laughs> <laughs> Now, if your child gets too hussin, fussin', or cussin' during our performance, you can take them right outside of these red doors right over here and view the rest of the show from the bench that we've placed out there without bothering the people around you. Lastly, this is an audience participation event. What that means is when you see the well-dressed gentleman like myself wearing these ties around our necks enter or exit the stage, we want you to cheer for us. Conversely, when you see the dirty, smelly cowboys enter or exit the stage, we want you to boo them. Sounds simple enough, right? That was convincing. <laughs> Let's go ahead and give it a try. Good guys! Yeah! Bad guys! Boo! Good guys! Yeah! Are you folks ready for a gunfight? Yeah! Are you ready for a killing? Yeah! You people are sick. <laughs> All right, folks, our show will be ready for you in about 45 minutes. <laughs> Make it an hour. <laughs> Talking to him when he gets like this. It's like God's city all over. 
over again. Let's calm down. We'll get some coffee going and try and talk to him later. of money to be had, but none of it rubbed off on me. Ah. Anyhow, tell me how this respectable business is treating you. Well, Doc, I'll tell you, Tombstone's a place to be. It's almost as if you could reach out and pluck the money right off the trees around here. Didn't you say the very same thing about Dodge City, Wyatt? It's different this time. You see, I'm through risking my neck. Strictly on the up and up. And that's just until this election season is over, isn't it? So you've heard of my intention. I can see it already. Wyatt Earp, County Sheriff. You haven't changed a bit. Well, Doc, there is something important I need to discuss with you. Go on. It's Ike Clank. He's on a war path, and this time he's got it for you. Huh. He's got it in his head. You've been running your mouth about his involvement with this Benson stagecoach holdup. And up. so what if I had? Ike Clanton is a no-good yellow-bellied snake in the grass. Rolling over on his friends like that, and for what? Some blood money from Wells Fargo? I made that deal with Ike. Now look. He'd get all the money, I'd get all the glory. And sure, that deal would help me come election time. So does that make me some snake in the grass? No, Wyatt. You wear a badge and carry a gun. That makes you a politician. <laughs> Frank McClowry has no such excuse. And neither does Ike Clinton. Any man who would sell out his friends like that has no business living. I would appreciate it if you mind your business where this is concerned. And if Ike comes my way, he makes it my business. We both know I handle my business the proper way. We don't need this. Us herbs, we're doing real well here in Tombstone. You see that Oriental? It's a gold mine. Virgil's already town marshal, and yes, I'm well on my way to becoming county sheriff. Now we don't need anyone to interfere with that. Very well, Wyatt. I won't be the one to interfere with your little plans. That's all I ask. Well, enough of this talk. It's high time you show me your best bottle of whiskey. I knew it was coming. There we go. Join me inside. <laughs> Are you still drinking old overhaul? You know me too well, Wyatt. I sure hope you have enough this time. Doc, I've got two bottles in the back with your name on it. Two bottles? Wyatt, I am an alcoholic, not a child. <laughs> another drink. And judging by the looks of you two, I could use a drink. All right, slow down, I Don't you think you've had enough? Don't you think that maybe I would tell you when I've had enough? Put your hands down, Tom. This gun ain't even loaded. See, I would never point a loaded gun at a real person. I'm okay? Who do you... Oh. You're what? biased. Yeah, you heard me first. I said it first. You're biased. Yeah, yeah. Well, now say it again, huh? Hey, hey Morgan Driver, bartender, get oh, out of here! Boys, all right, keep it down. <laughs> One job. <laughs> Morgan Earp. How many herbs you got in this town now? Ten? Fifteen? <laughs> Just five, Frank. More than enough to deal with you, boys. Right, right. What's that supposed to mean? Huh? Exactly what you think it means. All right, first of all, all we're here for. <laughs> told the truth about you. You're a drunken fool. What Wait, was, was that, that drinks, Doc? Huh? Would you get up? Ow! <laughs> Not to worry, Tom. 
You see, I talks. Oh, and he talks, but he never does back up any of those threats he makes. No, sir. You see, he's just a coward. You watch your words, Holiday. Do not make me kill you. I'm through with your words, Ike. You see, you've threatened me. You've threatened them more force, and I'm sick of hearing it. What do you say we settle this little blood feud here and now? Well, what do you say, huh? suddenly born. <laughs> yes, I'll see you around, Doc. Reckon it's about time we fetch all this fighting talk to a close. You boys are gonna do as I say. You tell your pal Holiday. I'll be waiting for him in the morning. The been that good. Never.
Looking for someone to act? <laughs> oh, I was. Oh. I was looking for your pal, Hollinger. Had I seen you any sooner, I'd have shot you first. Glad to disappoint you. Morgan, hold him at the jail when I fetch Judge Wallace. Yes. Come on, Ike. Yeah, you know the way. Yep. Oh. <laughs> really, Ike? Huh? Uh, one more. Had a gun on me, I pick a fight with you. That whole herb art. Well, oh, if it's a gun you want so badly, why don't you come over here and take it? Huh? Morgan! That... I've been threatening my family for months. He has every right to gun you down. Oh, really? He's not gonna Man. do it. Oh. But he'd be right. Morgan, get him inside. And get that bottle away from him. Hey, Morgan, why don't you come over here and try and take the bottle? <laughs> I wasn't ready. <clears throat> oh, thank you. about Sheriff Behan. He is a smart man because he leaves us alone. He's gonna find himself living a nice, long, happy life. Unlike the rest of them. <laughs> is that you making threats again? I know, Morgan. When I say men die, they die. All right, that's enough. I've dealt with men like you my whole life, Ike. You don't scare me. I'll go down to Charleston, down to San Simone. I'll fight every man in your gang. If you touch my family, I will kill you. That was an awful lot of tough talk. You see, it's just a shame it's coming out of a dead man. You boys have tried to run us out of this town, but we're still here, and we're not leaving! It ends today, Wyatt. I'm done talking. Let's go, boys. See you later. 
about them. If Ike gets himself shot, it's just more spoils for the rest of them. Then the way he's going, it might just happen. Well, he's drunk and suspicious, Virgil. And he knows about that deal we made to turn in them stage robbers. But if Curly Bill and Ringo find out, it's not going to sit well. They bury us. They bury the secret. That's right, Morgan. Yeah! Business, Doc. Nothing for you here. Well, what I hear is that there are more cowboys coming into town, and they're gunning for you. Seems to me like you can use every friend you can get. We can find those cowboys just fine, Doc. They're not far from here. They're held up in the empty lot behind the OK Corral on Fremont Street. They look to mean business and boys. They've got guns. And we will take those guns away from them. Virgil. Doc, if you're coming with us, you'll have to listen to me. Hang back. Hold on to this. Come along. Billy Clinton, dead. And that was it, over before it ever started. Two months after this gunfight, Virgil Earp was ambushed outside the Crystal Palace Saloon. Three shotguns went off, but he still refused to die. Crippled up pretty bad, Virgil wandered the West until death caught up with him in Nevada in 1905. Not as lucky was Wyatt's kid brother, Morgan. Morgan was shot in the back and killed while playing a game of pool up on Allen Street. Huh. Morgan died at midnight, March 19th, 1882. It was his brother Wyatt's birthday. In 1887, the year this whole town began to fall apart, after a lifetime of drinking, smoking, and, well, bad decisions, tuberculosis caught up with yours truly up in Colorado. I don't care to talk about it. <laughs> that same year, while putting together a new gang up in northern Arizona, Ike Clinton was shot and killed by a mail-order detective. What? Yeah. Uh -huh. Wyatt Earp was the last man standing out of all of this. Wyatt would spend his days traveling, making his way from Idaho to Alaska, and finally ending up in Jazz Age Hollywood, 
searching for another tombstone and the chance to get things right. He never would find it, though. Wyatt died in Los Angeles in 1929, just ahead of his 81st birthday. His final words? Suppose. Suppose. And that, folks, is our show. We hope you enjoy it. things for you. If you'd like to come on down to the set and get some photos with the actors, we invite you to do so. After all, this is as good as we're going to look all day. <laughs> if you have any questions about the history you just...